After his relationship with his girlfriend ended badly, a man quickly leaves his home to have some time to think. However, he later gets trapped in a restroom and he soon realizes he's in danger. A guy named Wes drives away from his place after getting his heart broken by his girlfriend. Then, he stops at a rest area to take a break from an exhausting drive. Wes also buys a chocolate bar from a vending machine, but the snack is stuck. Furious, he hits the machine and curses at it. Suddenly, a trucker, Sharon, says some things may seem broken, but it usually just means one stop trying. She approaches Wes and asks for a coin for the vending machine. Luckily, Sharon gets the chocolate bar and gives it to Wes. As she departs, Sharon notices a slimy substance dripping from a plant and smiles. She then tells Wes to clean the back seat of his car so that he can sleep lying down, which will make his life on the road easier. Once Sharon is gone, Wes returns to his vehicle while eating and looks at the red box in the passenger seat before noticing how messy his car is. Then, he grabs a teddy bear that his ex-girlfriend, Brenda, gave him. Because of this, Wes recalls spending time with Brenda, making him miserable. Despite that, Wes tries to calm himself down and gets out of the car to call Brenda. However, the call goes to voicemail, so he leaves Brenda several messages until his phone dies. Frustrated, Wes throws his phone and breaks it, instantly regretting what he did. Wanting to feel better, Wes turns on the car radio to play some music and drinks alcohol. He grabs his things from the car and takes them outside, drinking until nighttime and getting drunk. He then burns a collection of photos, but he keeps one of Brenda's pictures. Eventually, a drunk Wes passes out. Seconds later, a bright light wakes him up and Wes sees a girl holding the box of photos. The following day, Wes wakes up with no pants on, revealing that he burned his pants last night. Suddenly, he feels the urge to throw up, so he rushes to the restroom to let it out. While Wes is throwing up, a man from the next stall asks if he's okay. Wes notices graffiti on the wall with a human's body and a creature's head. Wes assures the man he's fine, apologizing for disturbing him with his thing, but the guy has no idea what he's talking about. So, Wes explains the purpose of restrooms, toilet papers, and even the hole in the wall. However, the man considers the three most important things, which are Wes, him, and the conversation they're having. Wes is not into restroom conversations, but the man believes it's a great place since it's private and free from distractions. The unknown man then asks if Wes is recovering from drunkenness, to which he says yes. Wes also adds he's lonely for being alone at the rest stop, unconsciously rubbing his face. Then, Wes becomes disgusted after realizing his hands are filthy from touching the toilet. So, he gets out of the stall to wash his face and hands. Meanwhile, the man in the other stall continues talking to him. Curious, Wes tries to peek into the other stall while talking to the stranger. The man realizes they don't know each other's names, so Wes introduces himself and the guy asks him to return to the stall. But Wes refuses because he doesn't want to talk to random people hiding in restroom stalls. Unfortunately, the man claims there's nothing he can do about that, saying that's where he finds himself presently. Uninterested, Wes heads for the door to leave, but he realizes Brenda's picture is missing and looks for it. The man then wants to introduce himself, saying Wes needs to do two things to properly pronounce his name. He instructs Wes to stick out his tongue and grab the tip between his finger and thumb, which Wes finds weird. Wes obeys the man who reveals his name, Gatanadua, but Wes calls him Gat. At the same time, Gat says it's the name of a very old god. With this, Wes thinks he was named after that god, but Gat reveals he's the god himself. However, Wes doesn't believe him. As Gat tells him he can be considered a demigod in some mythologies, Wes continues looking around until he finds Brenda's photo in his stall. Wes then looks through the hole to see Gat, who gets angry and orders Wes not to attempt to look at him. Despite that, Wes steps on the toilet and peeks at Gat from above the stall, infuriating the god. In the blink of an eye, Wes finds himself on the ground outside the restroom. Although confused, he returns to his car and finds Brenda beside him. Then, Brenda repeats Gat's warning not to look in the stall, and worms suddenly come out from her eyes. This awakens Wes in the restroom, with Gat reminding him that he warned him. Still, Wes refuses to believe Gat and thinks the god shot him up with some hallucinogenic substance while he was unconscious outside. Ignoring the enraged Wes, Gat tells him that Brenda is practically in the restroom since she's tied to his misery. Wes retorts that Gat doesn't know anything, but the god claims he knows everything. Also, Gat points out he's neither a man nor a woman. In this belief, Wes attempts to leave, but the door is locked. Gat states that Wes can only go once they're finished. Wes begins to panic and screams for help, but Gat puts a layer of protection around the area to hide them, frightening Wes. Gat then asks if Wes is agitated because he saw Brenda, shocking Wes that the god knows about her. According to Gat, their encounter isn't random, claiming it knew Wes would walk in sad and miserable. Furious, Wes attempts to break the door, but his effort is fruitless. Wes yells at Gat to let him out, but the god points out that no one's coming for him because he's alone, making him remember Brenda. Wes tries convincing 
convincing himself that it's just a nightmare, only forget to tell him to pull it together. Wes wishes he had driven the extra 40 miles to the next rest stop, but Gat says it wouldn't have helped since they didn't meet by chance. Gat then apologizes for raising its voice, revealing it's been a long time since it spoke to someone. As Wes looks in the mirror, he notices Gat's glowing body from the bottom of the stall dripping with a slimy substance. Terrified, Wes rushes to the urinal to escape through the window but slips and hits his head. Gat tells him they need to talk, so Wes asks if the god will let him out afterward. However, Gat doesn't want to make any promises it can't keep. With no other choice, Wes continues talking to Gat. The god reminds Wes he can't look at its true form, or he will turn into a grotesque shell devoid of humanity. Noticing a way out through the vent, Wes finds a tool to open it while speaking with the god. He breaks the toilet paper holder to open the vent and jokingly asks why Gat is staying in the restroom. As a distraction, Wes continues talking to Gat, asking if it was the god's plan for them to meet. But as it turns out, Gat is just a piece of that plan, not pulling the strings. With enough time, Wes manages to open the vent. He goes into the vent to escape, but as he crawls, he still ends up inside the restroom. Wes then checks the vent, only to find it locked. Gat says there's no way out of the restroom. Then, Wes notices the layer of protection is gone, so Gat reveals that its power is getting weaker, making it harder for it to conceal them. Exhausted, Wes asks what he needs to do to leave the place, to which the god replies that the universe has a favor to ask. However, Wes points out that the universe is giving him a hard time in life, but Gat tells him to take responsibility for his actions. Wes argues that Gat doesn't know him, so to prove him wrong, the god asks him about the secret he's been hiding. This makes Wes remember Brenda again, causing him to cry. Wes tries to hide in his happy memories with Brenda, but Gat interrupts him, saying it needs his mind in the present. Despite that, Wes disobeys the god. So, Gat furiously tells him to obey and listen to what it has to say, causing Wes's ears to bleed. Afterward, Gat shares a story about a being of pure energy, alone in an ocean of infinite nothing, until it discovered the power to give physical form to its thoughts and feelings. Eventually, these thoughts and feelings became its unwanted children that filled the void, so this being, the father, set out to destroy them. During the fight, the father's oldest child sliced through his side. The blood from the wound filled the infinite nothing, becoming the planets, stars, and life. The father begged his children to close the wound to stop more life from forming. His children agreed, but only if he would let this new life continue to exist, and the father conceded. Unfortunately, the father hated humanity so much that he secretly created a being of pure destruction, capable of undoing all life and returning back to the infinite nothing. As it turns out, that's Gat. After creating Gat, the father weakened, allowing his children to overpower and lock him away in the darkest pit in the deepest ocean. Meanwhile, Gat was hidden in the ether, where it remained until now. The god then revealed that it doesn't want to destroy humanity, admitting it started feeling a connection to life. The god claims its power to hide from its father is fading, since it's starting to enter into its corporeal presence. At the same time, Gat's father has broken free from his prison and is searching for Gat. As Wes checks the slime outside Gat's stall, the god explains that once it fully enters into the material world, it will fulfill its father's purpose for it, which is the annihilation of all life in the universe. Saying only Wes can give what it needs to return to its ethereal form, Gat asks him to satisfy the feelings that have awakened in it. Showing a part of its body to Wes through the hole, Gat states that there's only one part of Wes that can do that. Moments later, Wes hears someone arrive outside. Gary, the property supervisor gets out of his car, but he can't hear Wes shouting for help because of his earphones. But after cleaning the area, he returns to his car and removes one of his earphones, finally hearing Wes. Gary immediately goes to the restroom to check, finding the door locked, while Gat warns Wes not to ask for help from the man. Enraged, Wes orders Gat to open the door and the god eventually obliges. us. As the door opens, Wes immediately attempts to leave, but Gary pushes him back and wants to know what happened, trapping both of them with Gat. When Wes fails to explain his very long story, Gary soon discovers that the door is locked, and someone inside the stall is responsible for it. Gat makes it clear they're not going anywhere, telling Gary he's now a part of the plan and putting the layer of protection back up. Wes tells Gat that maybe it can take Gary to satisfy its needs while he leaves, but the god refuses, saying the supervisor has a different role to play. On the other hand, Gary says he'll call the police and grabs Wes when he tries to take his phone to call a cab, but he doesn't have a signal. A furious Gat orders Gary to hang up and shouts at the supervisor through his phone, making him obey and let go of Wes. Gary and Wes demand to be released, but Gat states that Gary is a hindrance to what needs to be done. Exasperated, Gary grabs Gat's stall door and gets electrocuted. Then, the god instructs Wes to return to the other stall while he deals with Gary and Wes complies. 
Seconds later, Wes takes out Brenda's photo to distract himself, but Gary's screams are hard to ignore as Gat mercilessly devours him. Afterward, it starts raining blood inside the restroom, and the sight of Gary's heart on the floor makes Wes recall a memory wherein he was looking at another woman. Brenda noticed this, and that's how the two met. Getting out of the stall, Wes sees the bloody mess that Gat made before picking up Brenda's picture. He asks Gat why it killed Gary, so the god claims it can't let anyone stand in the way of what they need to do. Noticing Gary's severed body parts, Wes asks what he needs to do to end that nightmare, to which the god responds that he needs to satisfy its physical form. However, Wes misinterprets it, looking at the hole and thinking he now knows what Gat meant earlier. Gat also promises to let Wes go once they're done and return it to its ethereal form, and its father will no longer be able to find it. At the same time, while Gat's father is still weak from escaping his prison, it will be easy for Gat's siblings to put him back there. As Wes listens to Gat, he desperately tries to escape and even uses Gary's severed leg to break the door down. Eventually, through the hole, Wes shows Gat his most prized body part down there. Repulsed, Gat clarifies that it just needs a piece of Wes's liver and Wes must cut it out himself, sliding a shard of glass under the stall door. Understandably, Wes refuses, so Gat reminds him not to be selfish, making the guy furious. Wes then stalls by telling a story about his father, who worked hard for their family but made sure they all knew that every dime they had came from him. He used it as an excuse to torment Wes's mother, and still, his father described her as a selfish woman when she killed herself. Gat then points out they're wasting time, so Wes picks up the shard of glass but continues expressing how much he hates his father. This pisses off the god, and the restroom begins to tremble as something dangerous tries to get inside, leaving a hole in the wall. When Wes notices something in the hole, he approaches it and realizes it looks like outer space, like a vast expanse of nothing. So, the god tells him its father is near. Gat asks Wes if he'd give up his liver for Brenda. Wes thought she'd fill the void inside him and make him normal, but she didn't. Then, Gat mentions how Wes betrayed Brenda's trust, infuriating Wes and causing him to peek through the hole and scream at the god. Unfortunately, when Wes sees the god, he gets a terrifying vision wherein the teddy bear Brenda gave him becomes huge and puts him inside its stomach. As Wes awakens in the stall and drops the shard of glass, he goes outside and starts laughing in front of the mirror, wiping his face with his bloody hands. He then shouts for Gat's father to come, and it isn't long before the hideous being breaks the restroom wall. Gat's father tries to pull everything inside the restroom toward him, forcing Wes to hide inside the stall. Gat claims that it can't protect them anymore, adding that if Wes allows the world to be destroyed that way, Brenda will perish along with it, and her memory will be worthless. Gat then removes Wes's memories of Brenda to show him what's at stake, so Wes changes his mind but asks to see Brenda for the last time. Gat grants his wish and shows Wes the memory of when Brenda gave him the teddy bear. Afterward, Wes claims he was happy with Brenda, but Gat points out that it frightened him. Gat also says that even now, Wes's feelings tear him up inside. Thinking only of Brenda, Wes finally grabs the shard of glass to remove his liver, screaming in pain and struggling to take out the organ. At the same time, Wes remembers how Brenda found the photos of all the women he killed, revealing his true nature. Sadly, because of this, Wes killed Brenda too. Meanwhile, Gat takes Wes's liver through the hole and consumes it. Then, Wes stumbles out of the stall and he sees Gat's true form when it opens its stall door. Moments later, a wounded Wes awakens and the restroom has no more trace of Gary's blood. Although he's weak, he crawls toward the door, wondering where Gat is. But the god suddenly speaks, saying it's returned to the ether and the threat has passed. Wes declares he's a hero for saving the universe, but Gat claims he isn't since heroes are remembered, and he will be forgotten. Gat also adds they both deserve to be forgotten because they are beings of pure destruction. As Wes finally gets out of the restroom, he clumsily walks and eventually crawls to reach the teddy bear, but it isn't long before he dies. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.